I'm here. <laughs> my little changeling, my little changeling. Uh... Oh, is that the time? <clears throat> Honestly, I was planning on starting my series with the season premiere. But this episode, I suppose, is a good place to start. Now, let's see. What's this episode about? Starlight Glimmer and Trixie gets married? Oh, wait. That's my fanfic. I mean, that's a fanfic. I mean, that's... Never mind. Well, let's get on with it. All hail. Bow down to the... So, we start the episode with Twilight teaching Starlight a new friendship lesson. Did you? How? When? What? Well, it's good to see they haven't retconned Starlight's super magic. Yet. But yeah, now Starlight has to go out and find herself a new friend. By tomorrow night. So anyway... Starlight gets some help from the main six, so I'm sure nothing could go wrong. Ms. Starlight Glimmer, meet Mrs. Cake. Are you baking? Can I help? <gasps> Howza, wowza! How are you trying to put me out of business with your fancy magic thingy? What's a cake? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Sorry. <laughs> Meet Big Mac. Yep. He's not much of a talker. Nope. Yep, 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 yeah, 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 you did something! Whoa, 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 what's happening? I feel really weird. I'm talking so much, and I'm so articulate, enunciating with such precise pronunciation. <laughs> Annie Apple awoke and accidentally ate an auburn azalea. Ah! Make it stop! Well, I can't be friends with some pony who doesn't talk. The trick to finding a new friend is to render yourself radiant. First impressions count a great deal, you know. I'm glad you all got past my first impression. You really think a new outfit will help me meet ponies? Oh, with the right outfit, you can do anything, darling. When will it be ready? Three weeks. Dinner's tomorrow. <gasps> Spitfire! <laughs> Sorry. Who's that? Uh, only the Wonderboltiest pony in the Wonderbolt. Come on, I'll introduce you. You coming or what? I guess my first question would be, what's a Wonderbolt? <gasps> You've never heard of the Wonderbolt? Where have you been? <laughs> Enslaving villages, I guess. <laughs> You're adorable. But probably not what Twilight had in mind. Yeah, that didn't go so well. Two cases of magical mishaps. Successfully making friends. And maybe a little more. With animals. And not knowing who the Wonderbolts are. Even though I don't see why that means she can't be friends with them. The only one who doesn't try to play matchmaker was Rarity. Though she does help. If Twilight's willing to push back the dinner three weeks. After a tedious day of not making friends, Twilight goes to the spa to take her mind off of things. And that's where she meets some pony who also feels like she's judged based on her past. I've been trying to make friends, but it's not easy. They're not saying it, but I think every pony knows about my past. I may have been a tiny bit completely and utterly evil. Ponies judge me on my past, too. Finally, a pony I can relate to. She then goes running to Twilight to tell her the good news. Twilight, guess what? I made a new friend! That's fantastic news! She's great! Great! She's powerful! Powerful? She's... Hello! 
princess. Trixie? Hmm. That reaction doesn't feel fitting. Let's try that again. Did you? How? When? What? That's better. You know each other? You could say that. We've had our differences. Meeting number one. You act like a bully, and Twilight had to save your sorry flank. Meeting number two. You trapped Ponyville in a giant fishbowl, and Twilight had to save Ponyville's flank. For the umpteenth time. Yeah, not the best track record. Well, if she can't be a performer, perhaps she could try her hoof at modern art. There are plenty of reviewers who have seen this episode and thought Trixie was just her usual one-trick pony self. But this is where you see that her personality was written geniusly. I'll make another Trixie video to go more in depth on her characterization, though since I need extra time to focus on Trixie's personality anyway. Anyways, while Trixie and Starlight are on their way to Trixie's wagon and talking about taking over the world, I'm pretty good at organizing stuff. Magic props, brainwashed crowds. <laughs> Twilight Stalker arrives and asks how her friendship with Trixie is going. But it seems Twilight doesn't trust Trixie. Starlight points out that they have so much in common, and that's what Twilight's afraid of. So instead, she introduces Starlight to her friend. I can introduce you to my friend here. Nice to meet you. No, no, you can come out now. You like music, right? DJ Pone 3 would be the perfect friend for tonight's incredibly important dinner with Celestia. You know, if you decide to make a last minute change. <laughs> FYI, this is the first ever mention of the name DJ Pwn3 in the show. And FYI, the name Vinyl Scratch is purely fanon. I'm not saying it's not a good name. I mean, Lulamoon is a good last name for Trixie, even though that's a fanon name. Or like the character Nazo is fanon in the Sonic franchise. Oh, hey, look, there's Derpy and... Did she just bite her tongue? Ouch! Why aren't any of the other analysts concerned about Derpy biting her tongue? Don't you know how much that hurts? So as Starlight was trying to uplift Trixie's spirits, she mentions how she's better at magic. Only when I'm wearing a soul-sucking evil amulet, so I don't think that counts. Funny story, don't need to get into it. But then she mentions a trick that she hasn't been able to do. The Moonshot Manticore Mouth Dive? The Moonshot Manticore Mouth Dive! So, would that be the mmm dive? Oh wait, mmm is already trademarked by Pinky. Eh, tomato tomato. But when Trixie talks about how she didn't know how Huftini performed the trick, Starlight mentions it could be done if you used real magic. Obviously. Way to rub it in. After Starlight explains how she could teleport Trixie into the box, she offers to be Trixie's magic show pony, magic helper, magic show pony helper. Magic show helper pony. Yeah, that's it. Anyway, after mentioning when the magic show was, Starlight mentions a dinner on the same night and needs to vent. Even after Twilight says she trusts me, she clearly doesn't trust me enough to choose my own friends. Ugh, I guess you were right. No second chances. Of course, Trixie wasn't surprised. But then talks about not knowing how she was going to do the trick without her new assistant. And this is another part that the surface isn't where you need to look. But again, I'll be making it a separate Trixie video. And now we... Hold on. Is that an ice sculpture of a changeling? I swear that looks just like my Aunt Fred. Anyway, Celestia is not amused. Yes, it's dinner time and Starlight still isn't there. Twilight, however, has invited Twilight's friends of Starlight. Starlight Glimmer? I thought you said nose hair trimmers. What's going on? I'm hungry. And my nose is too hairy. 
this probably would have been more preferable if Twilight didn't make Starlight make friends and just have the three of them eating dinner or have the fourth place for Spike. How hard could that have been? Jin. Maybe she got lost amongst the uh, artichokes. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if that wasn't an excuse and that has actually happened before. It wouldn't be the first time she's gotten lost in that castle. After finding the stage, Twilight finds Starlight and Trixie talking. Trixie. No. Oh, I'm so glad we're not at that boring dinner. Obvious she's behind me, isn't she? Joke is obvious. Are you aware that at this very moment, Princess Celestia is waiting for you at a table with exquisite silverware placement? Seriously? You're angry because silverware placement? She didn't tell you she wasn't coming. Okay. She left Princess Sunbutt waiting. Okay. But silverware placement? Of course, the argument escalates with Trixie stepping in. Until she catches soof and mouth disease. Your pupil chose me, so I win. You win? That sounds like you just made friends with me to beat Twilight. Exactly! Wait! I mean, no! I got caught up in the moment. I like you. Beating Twilight is just a bonus. <gasps> oh, saying that didn't help, did it? Feeling betrayed, Twilight ran away. Every pony evacuate Ponyville before Starlight comes and removes your cutie marks and enslaves Ponyville. Trixie regrets what she said. However, she's in denial. But I'll go more into that. Looks like the great and powerful Trixie is back to a solo show. Trixie? Which is exactly the way she likes it. Thank you, Princess Twilight, for getting rid of that annoying pony who wanted to be my first friend. I am not sad at all. I definitely don't feel like my heart is breaking into a million pieces. Ouch. Again. But after being blatantly obvious that Trixie was upset... Come one, come all! Come and see the pathetic and friendless Trixie's way to go, dum-dum. You really messed it up this time. Repentance tour. She still goes through with... Wait, she's going to attempt a trick. A trick she knows she can't do. A trick she needed Starlight's help with. Without Starlight? Did you? How? When? What? You said it, Twilight. I was supposed to perform this trick with my great and powerful assistant. Great and powerful indeed. Your great and powerful friend was able to outmatch Twilight in a magic battle. Twilight, an alicorn whose special talent is magic, outmatched by a unicorn who had to also focus on levitating herself. Imagine if she didn't have to focus on levitating. However, Twilight talks with Starlight and admits that she's wrong and that they should be friends. <laughs> I beg your pardon. See what you did to Fluttershy? And Starlight saves the paint and growerful Trisky's life. The paint and growerful Trisky! And every pony lives happily ever after. One of the things I'd like to point out is that neither party was in the right or in the wrong and they were all just in their reasoning. And though it was a good lesson, the fact is that it's a copy and paste of the season premiere, with Twilight having to learn to give Starlight space to make her own choices, like how Celestia gave Twilight space. Don't get me wrong, 
I think it was done much better in this episode, as well as expanding upon it. But it was a copy and paste lesson. Although it did get a bit dark at the end where Trixie was going to perform a trick that she knew she couldn't do on her own. And it was a trick that would have killed her. In fact, Trixie was technically already in the belly of the beast before being magicked into the box. How were they allowed to have let attempted suicide into the show? And I know some will say that the manticore was tame, but the fact is that it did swallow Trixie. It even belched to show that she wasn't in its mouth. What would have happened if Starlight didn't act in time? Yeah, that about sums it up. Well, stay tuned for my Trixie analysis video. And if you like this video, then please join my hive and subscribe. Your king demands it. <laughs> bow down to the, bow down to the king. From the place <laughs> where the traitor lost both his name and his face. I'm getting this strange feeling that I'm forgetting something. Oh, well, I'm sure it's nothing. How do you get your hair to do that all the time? <sighs>